Welcome back. We are restoring an ASR 33 8-bit teletype. In the previous episode, we deciphered the ancient scriptures, repaired our distributor, fixed our broken answer back drum holder, got the machine finally to transmit something, and discovered it either transmitted or received the wrong characters. So in order to check that, we want to hook it up to a computer terminal. But not just any terminal. So today we uh, put a, a little test setup together, a vintage one of course, uh, to start to put the ASR33 through its spaces. So what I want to do is uh, check the uh, character sent uh, by uh, the, the teletype and also see if we can receive some other type by a known good terminal. And most people would do that by putting a uh, or buying an adapter that goes from 20 million current loop to RS RS232 and running terminal emulation on the computer. But of course, we are not sane, um, and uh, I realize I have the uh, 2645 terminal, which of course was built at a time where it was uh, replacing uh, teletypes, so it's compatible with them. Uh, you can see here. It goes all the way down to 110 and then you have this convenient parity and full duplex and half duplex. Uh, and also uh, the, the interface card uh, supports both RS-232 and 20 million current loop, uh, although I'm not sure how to set it up for that. But before I can do that, uh, you'll recognize that the HP 26 45 I use in my mid the fourth video so I have made a slight modification to it and right now it talks Orobash the Star Wars language so it wouldn't be of much use I have to switch it back to talking ASCII which would be the original card over there. So this is the original card I replaced the character generation ROMs. So let's do that first. This is the display control board. So that's the one with the Star Wars ROM on it. And we want to go back to the regular one with the ASCII characters as easy as changing a ROM or a board so that's uh, for it to speak uh, back to go back to normal ASCII and I also have to configure the communications card uh, because it has all these settings and I think one of the settings in there is the one for uh, the current loop control And I spent hours looking how to configure this board uh, to do 20 milliamp current loop and uh, I knew it could do it because it's the 13260B and it says in there either standard RS-232 or 20 million current loop and this is the this this is the right model this is the GP async uh, general purpose so that's the right one um, and then we were looking at the straps they are all the switches they all do something and they are all documented and I was pretty sure in there would be a switch to Go to switch it to 20 milliamp current loop and couldn't find it and eventually we went to the next page and what happens is that it doesn't depend on the switch on the car it depends on how you wire it up at the plug at the back and if you connect one to A that transforms it to current loop and we had to figure out what CL and CLA meant, but it's the both end of the current loop. So we eventually figured it out. So you have to build a cable like this, uh, where actually they tell you that you want to do one to H. One to A was the older model and, and connect all those things. 
and ta-da, I had a free hood, I made the cable, so that should work. So com card goes back in, no modification. Let's not forget to put this thing back on. And now I should talk back regular English. They're already yay okay. Okay, so he's back to his old self. And here the only thing I should need to do is put this special plug that has the current enable wiring in it and I should be good to go so the way the wiring works you can connect the ASR32 from the connector 2 and ours came with that connector equipped with lugs so we just figured out which was TX which was RX or you can connect it down all the way at the bottom with the the uh, uh, the strip uh, connectors. We checked. We are full duplex, and the wiring is pretty simple. From the HP terminal, this is a TX, goes straight into the RX. And we just put a little resistor so we can probe the current with the scope. And on the transmit side, it's uh, we have to do the loop ourselves because this doesn't provide current. So I have a uh, power supply on the side, uh, uh, 12 volt power supply. So the loop is plus TX, RX, and back to the ground. And that, of course, goes to the terminal. Okay, so we want to be sure we are all the way down to 110 remote caps lock that should do it and let's see turn this one on and then. okay I'm transmitting and of course it's full duplex so I'm not receiving anything uh, for that I need to turn on the power supply create the transmit loop and, and it's going the other direction here you can see the characters appearing okay so all we have to do is that to check that we receive and transmit the right thing and here's the final setup with an osmaloscope added in the setup to see the current going both ways so if I put this one to remote and start transmitting characters. I uh, should see them coming through. Here they go. So you see them at the bottom. These are 110 baud's characters transmitted from the HP to the SR33. So we'll see if it receives anything. Turn it on. And So it receives something, when I do G, it decodes control G and the bell, so that's close but not quite, uh, it doesn't seem to advance with characters, uh, but this I figure out why, I have to get it all the way back to zero, it still doesn't advance, but when I do space it advances. So it decodes space correctly. Sometimes it advances with a letter. And then uh, no, Carl took a, a, a video with his uh, iPhone to make sure that the, the cylinder was actually turning and jumping. It is, but it's not printing very much. 
Uh, I think it did some carriage return sometimes. Yeah, it did. Still doesn't go all the way back. So, printer, some sign of life, not great. And then on the transmit side, um, let's make a reference trace. Let's let's first transmit an A, so we know what it is. That's an A. That's what we should look for and put it in reference memory. Okay. And now I'm going to try to get an A. It should be the same. And this is very typical of what we had. We have an A. Starts good. But then it starts again. It happens something to it. And sometimes a whole bunch of blanks at least seems. Yeah, those are blanks. Just a start bit and, and nothing. And if I if I do other characters, it's the same, it goes too long. So one, two. Yeah, I got a good one for once. So um, that led us to a long chase, uh, trying to figure out what was uh, why it was repeating characters. So first we thought it was something wrong with the keyboard and the, the, the repeat bar, but we could see that uh, the main uh, key down there that just went down and up. So it, 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 it did the right thing. So then after a long, long search and trying to figure where the adjustments were, we finally discovered that our problem was coming from this over here. This fellow can trip, can trip a sand, and usually it's it's a magnet, and it's triggered by the tape reader. When a tape reader wants to send a character, he has to have a way to start a cycle, and it does it through the magnet and through this and apparently if you do a key you see that that is moving and it should not so at first we thought dang it the magnet is triggered and I took the wire out so now the magnet is not triggered so it's something mechanical and if I hold it up come on Woo. I'm getting zapped there you go now it's fine So it's the adjustment of that thing, and it turns out after a good hour of search, we found the place in the hieroglyphics, and this is the trip lever over travel and the armature extension. So if you read the hieroglyphic, they say to check trip distributor clutch, blah 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 and uh, rotate the main shaft until cam roller is on the high part of the reader trip lever cam. Uh, position the trip lever to the center of the armature extension. Requirement, blah, blah, blah. So they, they give you a complicated and incomprehensible way to check it. But it turns out that all they want is you to press this. Uh, I should, yeah, it's off. That, that never fails and then if you turn it manually I put my little arrows here to turn it the right direction so I trip the clutch put it to maximum extension and then they give you a distance uh, to respect between this and a little notch and it turns out that we were way way out of it so do that do that I need to push it quite a bit. So conveniently they put little notches so you could, could adjust the whole thing. So was the standard ASR33 flimsiness. It's hard to make precise adjustments. But it should be almost in the notch. So it has to be fairly extreme. There you go. So 
So that was adjustment number one. Adjustment number two is the other page of the hieroglyphics and finally deciphered it that uh, I have to put in the stop condition so we'll just get it back into stop condition there we go went to stop we'll put in stop hold the armature uh, in attracting position rotate main shaft until a clearance exists between the end so, uh, of the armature and the what the trip lever that's called the trip lever and so as soon as you have a little gap here you have to adjust another gap here by releasing that screw um, release it and what is it again? I have to. Yes, I have to move and wait that it moves forward just a little bit. Any day now. There you go. It just moved. Yeah, this is as soon as there is a little clearance. A little bit more. There we go. Then that should be. While you hold that, that, yeah, that was a problem. While you hold it, you should have a tiny clearance. So we were way, 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 way off. Right. I don't know if you can see that. But there's a tiny clearance on the top and a tiny clearance in the front. Right, so let's see if that gives us better results. So let's see if after the adjustment we do something better. And here we go. Now, it doesn't trip anymore. And I get a clean character. So if I look at this, and try to type an A. So at the bottom I have a reference for an A that has been generated by the HP terminal. And it encodes it perfectly. Uh, and now well, let's try a B. B, save it. Right. So now I'm going over here. I'm going to do a B. One, two, three. B. And you can see it's exactly the same thing. So now we should have the transmit working at least, and. This is going fine. I should be able to go from here to there. Yeah. Something's going to be fine. Return. Line feed, line feed. Numbers. So few, uh, we have it transmitting correctly. We don't have it receiving anything quite yet. So that will be for another session. Uh, at least we have one direction going and uh, a pretty good test setup. So Get, get figure out how the line feed works because it doesn't work on this machine so we'll need that okay. we thought we didn't have enough asr 33s only two so <laughs> robert <laughs> brought his <laughs> this is a teletype palooza